The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. In our reading today, Bartimaeus comes to Jesus with faith, asking that he might see again. Recognizing Jesus' identity, Bartimaeus is the first person to call him son of David in the Gospel of Mark, our reading for this morning. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he gained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel reading for this day is one of the last miracle stories we will hear during this cycle B of Mark and John. We'll soon be moving on to cycle C of the Revised Common Lectionary with readings coming almost exclusively from Luke's gospel. Now the miracle stories of Jesus in the gospels are significant illustrations of Jesus' divinity and mission of redemption for all that is broken by sin. These miracle stories are meant to give rise to a singular affirmation of faith, that Jesus is the Christ of God, and through him there is new life here and now, and forever with him. One of the things that happens, however, in these miracle stories of Jesus Some in the crowd do not necessarily identify Jesus as the Christ of God, but really mostly merely as a great healer or some type of miracle worker. They believe he has great gifts, but the Christ of God, not so much. The story of Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, is a bit different in that a blind beggar, a blind beggar, is able to identify Jesus as God's Messiah, while sighted people cannot. Irony? I think so. Yet it really shouldn't surprise us. How many people haven't heard the good news of God's grace and mercy in Jesus and still remain spiritually blind? Haven't grabbed onto that new life that Jesus offers and following him into the world to continue the work that he has called each of us to. Irony? I think so. So what compels a person to move from spiritual blindness to seeing Jesus as the light of the world? Now this might be a larger question that we can handle here this morning. I did promise that this service would last just an hour, so I got to step it up a bit here. But I think it suffices to say it's a matter of the heart. What's here? Not what's here. Does the good news of God's grace and mercy in Jesus Christ warm the heart and turn it towards the things of God? Or does it, does the heart remain cold and distant? Bartimaeus couldn't see, but he had heard of Jesus And Bartimaeus' heart was warmed. Faith was stirred in him. And he recognized Jesus as his Savior. And that changed the direction of his life forever. Bartimaeus' movement from blindness to being able to recognize Jesus as the Christ of God is consistent with all of Scripture. Doesn't it say in Romans 10, 17, so faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ? Or in John 20, 30, 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Or in Luther's meaning to the third article of the creed. I probably could ask the confirmants that. They, should, they probably have that memorized. Okay. I'll give it for you this morning. Luther writes, I believe that I cannot believe my own reason or strength in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and keeps me in true faith. It is the word of God that does the work of faith in and through us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to warm the heart and create faith in us. Luther was once asked if he took any satisfaction in bringing about the reformation of the church. And he replied, I did nothing. The word of God did everything. This little story written by Mitch Alban is called Tuesdays with Maury. Evidently they had some type of classroom experiment here. On this day, Maury says that he has an ex ex exercise for us to try. We are to stand facing away from our classmates and fall backwards, relying on another student to catch us. Most of us would be uncomfortable with this, and we cannot let go for more than a few inches before stopping ourselves. And we would laugh in or embarrassment. Finally, one student, a thin, quiet, dark-haired girl whom I noticed almost always wearing bulky white fishnet sweaters, crossed her arms over her chest, closed her eyes, leans back, and did not flinch. Like one of those Lipton tea commercials where the model splashes into the pool. For a moment, I am sure she is going to bump to the floor. At the last instant, her assigned partner grabs her head and shoulders and yanks her up harshly. Whoa! Several students yell. Some clap. Maury finally smiles. You see, he says to the girl, you closed your eyes. And that was the difference. Sometimes you cannot believe what you see. You have to believe what you feel. And if you're ever going to have other people trust you, you must feel that you can trust them too, even when you're in the dark, even when you're falling. You see, if we're ever going to fully trust God with our lives and all that we have and all of our possessions, it is necessary for us to become blind to our own agendas and fall backwards with full confidence into the arms of our loving God so that we may see Jesus as our Lord and Savior and serve him and our neighbors with generous and quiet hearts. Amen.